Pedro from AMP Reacts. I'm here today with Anders from Bloody Hammers to talk about songs of unspeakable terror. How's it going? <laughs> I can't say it as good as you. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, man. Well, you can but sing it better than me. <laughs> I don't so, know if I can say the title as good as you. I should have got you to do an intro, some sort of like Orson Welles, like... Uh, yeah, on the album. You, know, you, know, you know, like those guys that do the movie trailers that have like the, that sexy voice for the movie trailers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you. <laughs> that's definitely, yeah, that's me. That's my thing. Uh, <laughs> the first question that I have for you about this record is the moment I started listening to this album, I think it's undeniable the punk influences that you have on this record. What pushed you towards that avenue? <laughs> Uh, I would definitely, because uh, we uh, had only released The Summoning. You, you remember our last record, mm -hmm. The Summoning. It, uh, it had only been out for six months whenever the, the virus took over the world. And I just, whenever there was a lot of doom and gloom, you know, going on. And uh, just, I just remember thinking, I need to do something to keep my head out of the news and just kind of to keep my own sanity. And I didn't think it would be a Bloody Hammers album because I was just in the mood to not write doom and gloom. You know, I was just, I, just because there was so much doom and gloom already in the world. So I, I just started writing these kind of like fun songs and like you said, like punkish, melodic, you know, still aggressive, but, uh, but fun. You know, just the complete opposite of what's going on in the world is what I wanted to do. And uh, when I finished it, uh, I, I let you know my label hear it just because I thought I would I thought it would be a side project, but um, they loved it and they wanted to put it out as a Hammers album. So uh, here it is. There's yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think people are liking it. You know, like, I, I thought that you know I, you never know. I mean, you can't please everybody. I mean, there's a couple of people who are you know, upset. We kind of did this but you know i, I love it yeah i'm mean, glad yeah not that i didn't like the previous records but I, I thought this record still had it was still bloody hammers it still had the band's dna you just kind of like deliver that dna i don't know in a different package yeah yeah definitely yeah I, and I uh that way what's that I kind of felt it that way. Like it, it's, it's, it didn't stop this record just because of the punk influence. It doesn't stop being a Bloody Hammers album. It still has a little bit of that gloom in there. It's just yeah. like you in a, from a different angle. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, it's like, uh, you know, there's been a lot of new, new fans we found on this, this one. So far, it's only been out a few days, but we've getting, you know, like some horror punk fans coming in and, so yeah, it's 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 cool, you know. I I grew up with like you know I was always been a big Alice Cooper fan and and uh, I always liked bands that would kind of go around and like if you go back to his catalog, it's all over the place. Like you know, he had his like new waves, you know, like you know like the early '80s kind of stuff. And I mean, yeah, it was always a surprise when you bought an Alice Cooper Cooper record back in the day. So, but I like that about bands who would throw you some curves and do some, you know, something off the wall. So. I went back and I checked. This is the shortest record that you've released, 32 minutes. What do you attribute to the shortness of the record? Is that a little bit influenced by the vibe of the, of the album? Because obviously the songs have a little bit of a more of a bite. They come at you fast, quick. They go away. So, do you feel like that influenced the overall length of the record, or is there a different reason behind it? Uh, that's just uh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't know. I just know I had these songs and I put them together and I looked at the link and I think it was like thirty three minutes or something. And then I, I just remember like some classic albums that I like like Kiss, like Kiss Dress to Kill is like thirty minutes. You know, like some just classic albums, you know, like Alice Cooper records are 30 minutes. You know, I don't know, like, I know, like, probably in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, albums started getting longer and longer and longer. I just felt like these songs were the best ones, and I just wanted to stick with these, and, I, you know, like I said, I didn't know it was, I didn't know if it was going to be a side pro. I thought, I, I really thought it was, I was going to put it on Bandcamp as, 
some new and name and, and let I them slow where they may. <laughs> the only one I had a problem with was Lucifer's Light. Like I couldn't figure out where to put it on the record because it was so different. And you know, whenever I was, you know, you only have so much time per side on a vinyl. And everywhere I put it, it was like not get too long or <laughs> and that, that uh was, that was one of the things that I mentioned on my album review is that I love that song. It, it, at the first glance, it doesn't feel like it fits the record because it's a little bit out of the box uh, in, in yeah. terms of everything else that you're offering on the album. But then when you listen to it, you're like, no, it fits the record because it, it, it gives it, it's still bloody hammers. It gives a different vibe and still has a lot of the same elements. I just wasn't a huge fan of where you put it on the album because I felt, <laughs> yeah. I felt like either the middle to break the record or all yeah. the way at the end to be like the closing track of the album. Because when I listened to it, it kind of had a, a little bit of a sense of finality. And then if you're playing live, you're going to come out with, with the encore later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, we struggled with it too. It, we, it just ended up where it was basically because of the running time on the vinyl. That's, that's really, a lot of people have said it's their favorite song and, and we wish we would have put it sooner. Uh, but it was just throwing off that first side too much, you know, like, I don't know. You have to think in, you have to think like vinyl now, you know, like and how it's going to. It's, it's, it's not just an MP3 on iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. So getting it, getting things to fit on each side, you know, so they're kind of equal length. Yeah, I can I can see that. I can see that. What is the part about the 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 recording of an album like this that you enjoy the most, and what is the part that you enjoy the least? Perhaps interviews is the part that you enjoy the least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say enjoying it. I mean, I just have to do it. It's just something I have to do, and I enjoy writing no matter what if anybody hears it ever i just it's just my escape you know especially in times like this when there's so much bullshit, you know i don't know if this is a family show but just uh you know it was a bad year so <laughs> yeah. it's just it's, yeah. it's, 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 that's an understatement <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, that's what i like the best about it is just having something to keep my head like you probably do this for you know, similar reasons, I mean, it keeps you keeps your head, you know, mm -hmm. uh, occupied. You're not on Twitter and arguing with people about politics, or <laughs> whatever. I don't, that's not me. I'm not really a social media guy. It's like to keep my head down and record. But the worst, I would say, is the mixing because I do everything uh, in my basement studio. Like we don't, we never been to a professional studio in our life we've never worked with engineers producers mixers i do it all and and, and mixing is the hardest part for me because i just lose my mind like trying to get everything to sound good in this small space and eq and i try to learn a little bit more as each record goes on it probably sounds a little bit better but i think the summoning is probably the best sounding album i just kind of hit that one uh pretty good but on this one I think it's probably second best sounding. I don't know. I guess. It's, Are you a perfectionist from that perspective? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, I say that mixes are never done. They're just surrendered. <laughs> just give up. Just yeah, you just. At some point, you just go back and forth. And, you know, you're listening to it in the car. You listen to it on the, you know, the boat, whatever. Like any kind of system, you listen to it, and something's different in every place you listen all oh, the vocals too loud here but i can't hear them in the car <laughs> it's it's maddening so uh yeah it's just every stereo is different and, and uh that's what i do work with a mastering guy who can kind of balance it out go across things like that but other than that i do all the mixing that just at, at some point you just say okay take it before i lose my mind just take it away from me <laughs> when you're recording the album, I get a feeling like a lot of the way you create the records, it's it's where you are in that period of time. It's a little bit of, of a snapshot into where, where you feel, where your head is. But once yeah. everything is said and done and you get a chance to look back, do you rediscover something about yourself that you couldn't see at that point? Perhaps you were a little bit, uh, it's hard to see sometimes the forest from the trees when you're in it. But when you're a little bit past beyond it, it's easier to look back and say, wow, you know, when I did this record, 
uh, I, I didn't think about this and, and now I'm thinking about it and, and maybe this is something that I, you know, I, I'm growing. There's a little bit of growth within, within myself. When you look at this record, do you see any of that? I haven't had a chance yet. I don't think it's had enough time. I think maybe like a year from now, or another, but it's still new to me. Even, you know, I'm still listening to it all the time and they're doing interviews and talking about it a lot. So, yeah, I mean, I'll always look back at this as, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the stuff going down in Italy that was so bad and horrifying, like we might all die. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know what was going on. I mean, it started, you know, in New York really bad. And I think it's like, uh, it's like a long time ago, uh, I bought, when I was in Los Angeles, I bought Toxicity by System of the Down, like close to when it came out or something. But I remember listening to it on the plane coming back home on uh, the day before 9 11 happened. And I'll always remember that record and 9-11 together. Like I'll never be able to. So I think with this album, I always, unfortunately, associate it with this pandemic. But I definitely, I was, you know, I was definitely trying to go escapism from the pandemic. I was trying, like I said, I was, I was just going for fun. I wanted to be the complete opposite of what was going on in the world. Uh, just for my own for your insanity. Uh, well, yeah. one, of, one of the things I love about Bloody Hammers, and it's true about every record, and I felt that on this album, even though that the sound had that punk drive, your vocals still has that 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 warm doom and gloom that it's dark, but at the same time embracing. You know, like I know I'm getting into trouble, but I'm going to get into it anyways. <laughs> you know, how, how do you do that? Like you, you have such a unique delivery that that you're able to to transfer atmosphere or a state of mind just because of the way you sing on a track regardless of how the track sounds your voice has that unique capability to it i, I just really hmm. gravitate towards it do, do you is, is that just natural you just or, or do you try to do something in order to transmit a feeling a, a, an ambiance to the track and the way you sing no i just go with the I just go with my gut. I just I just try not to, when I'm, especially when I'm writing songs, it's like when I think about them too much or they start to suck or like if I put my brain too much into it, I just like to just keep my brain clear and just let it come out. Wherever songs come from, you know, and just whatever feeling I have, just raw, just whatever emotion I'm feeling. And I don't know where songs come from, man. It's just, it's really... Uh, it's a mystery, it's a sort of cosmic thing. Like, I don't know, but uh, I don't like to think about it or analyze it because I don't, I don't want to scare it away. You know, like <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to jinx it. Right? Yeah. It's just, just let's do it and move on. <laughs> I, I just love it, man. I think you have such a unique tone, such a Thanks, unique yeah. voice. It, it's it's it, when I listen to one of your tracks, the moment you come on. It's like, I, I, if I don't know who, that it's you, I know that it's you at that time. Nobody has that kind of delivery that I was like, I was listening to this album and I'm like, wow, this song really feels punk. But then you come on and it's like, wow, that's very gothic, very doom. Like, how, you know, so like the sound is pulling you one way, but your voice is taking me in a completely different perspective. And I, I just, I love it. I just love that's it. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad that it comes across that way. And, and I'm glad that you can... Uh, it still feels like a bloody hammers album. No matter if I go and do a, maybe if I go to show tunes or something, or something, it's still. <laughs> but, but I think one, one just, of the reasons of, of that DNA staying intact, it's definitely your vocals because they're very unique. And, and yeah. it's, not like, it's not like you changed it. So you, you yeah. may have changed the sound around a little bit, but your voice stayed true to the band. And by staying true to the band, you were able to keep the album true to what Bloody Hammers is all about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is that the ties it all together because musically, I'm always like to experiment and float around and do whatever. And how do you approach the lyrics? Because that, that's the other component. I mean, we can talk about sound, we can talk about your vocals, but I always love the lyrical content on a Bloody Hammers album. Uh, how, do you, how do you approach a record like this, knowing that you were going to create more of a punk-driven album? 
uh, how did you approach the lyrics? On this one, it was, uh, I didn't want to get, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to get into any social commentary. I didn't want to, I just, I was just going for fun. I was thinking like, you know, 1950s drive-in movies and just uh, terrible B movies that, you know, just, I just wanted to go to this nonsensical place where politics didn't exist, or, <laughs> just good times. And, and, and um, when I was approaching the lyrics, you know, I typically don't do songs about zombies and <laughs> whatever. And uh, I, that's just, I think I was just thinking, you know, that's what I wanted to do was just a, a simple record and not not go too deep like you know past records i may have some hidden meetings in there and, and go a little deeper a little more cerebral i guess some people have said but oh not on this one just not with all that was going on in the world yeah i don't know just kept it simple do, do, do you think anything like in a in a safety deposit box for later Or you're the kind of guy that when it's time to work on a new record, you start on a new record fresh. You're not you're not really pulling things from the vault that that you've had sitting around for a long time. Titles, uh, sometimes titles. Um, like I remember going into the, the video store when I was a kid, like at the mom and pop video stores in the horror section, and like writing down the town it did at sundown and like like songs. At some point in the future, I want to write a song, <laughs> like this cool titles, you know, like that, like this, like brain that wouldn't die or, you know, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I, I keep a vault of things like that. And they normally, uh, melodies just pop in my head. That's what usually comes first. Like, like hands of the ripper, for example, I was playing drums and I was actually playing, uh, you ever heard that song easy living by Uriah Heat? Yeah. 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 I was playing that shuffle, you know, And uh, I slowed it down, and that's the melody just popped in my head, you know. And I was just like, hey, that's cool, but I didn't have any words. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, I, I like this melody. Like, so I just I recorded a melody on my phone, you know, and then I take it and I see. I look back at some of those notes and go, do I have something that fits? <laughs> and uh, those, you know, the, that, that rhythm. And uh, sometimes I'll find, oh, that fits, that fits. It's like a puzzle, you know? And, uh, but other times I don't, and I just have to think of something new. So. But I did have Hands of the Ripper written down as a song. I have one last question for you. And that is, if you could pick any TV series out right now uh, for you to write the score for that TV series, which one would you pick? Ah, I, I need to catch up. You know, I just watched The Sopranos for the first time 20 years after. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really far behind. I loved it, but uh, yeah, it was like 20 years old. I, I, uh, I tend, after I finish records, I tend to binge shows uh, and, and just kind of decompress from making the album, but I, I just watched True Detective. Like, I like that. I think that would be fun to do if they made, like, a season four of that. Um, man, uh, American Horror Story. I was going to say American Horror Stories because I, I, I thought he would be perfect for, for a show like that. Or yeah. Or uh, I, I think would fall into your wheelhouse and even into the wheelhouse of the band. That's where I thought you were going to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The American Horror Story. That I heard they're gonna they're going to do a reboot of True Blood, which I was that's kind of soon for a reboot of that. Yeah, like, I was just gonna say, uh, might as well do one of Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, it was just. <laughs> but uh, that really took a for me. Like I I like True Blood, like the first season or something. I was like, this is gonna go somewhere cool, and it just kind of. Sometimes crashed. things, uh, you know, it's it's so much of a good thing. The thing things run beyond. That expiry yeah. date, you know, people don't know uh, yeah. to call it quits while, while they're ahead, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I did like uh, some parts, you know, I like some parts of that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, anything kind of horror-based, you know, like, 
the the, um, the new Stranger Sabrina Things. show I think would be cool. Yeah, I do uh, another project uh, called Terratron where I just write soundtracks to, to movies that don't exist. And uh, just it's mostly uh, synth scores, you know? Mm-hmm. So I really like uh, Stranger Things and the kind of 80s. Yeah, yeah. John Carpenter, you know, Fabio Frizzi kind of stuff. Uh, so anything like that, I would love to do. Maybe they'll come knocking. Yeah, maybe so. Thanks <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, you never, you never know. Trust me, you never know. Stranger, <laughs> Stranger Things, no pun intended, but Stranger right. Things have happened. <laughs> yeah, I did have a song on a show called Vampire Diaries, which I've never seen. It's like I think it's like a teen. Uh, yeah, it's a teen. It's a, a teen vampire show. Yeah, I had a song on that uh, years ago, and it, <laughs> it's the most money I've ever made in my life. Like it's in music. I don't make anything in music. But, you know, just to be honest. Yeah, but the, that the, one. You, nobody get well. At least musicians don't get rich playing music these days. It is what it no, is. No, it's it's definitely just a labor of love at this point. Yeah, I hear <laughs> but uh, I mean, unless I mean, there's a few people who make it. It's like if you weren't around in the MTV days, it's tough now. It takes years to break a band. You know, there's some, there are some anomalies, I guess, like Ghost, and you know, there are some bands who have made it huge in recent years. But for the most part, it takes a long time to break a band. Now. Like back in the day, you know, like if a band had a video on Headbangers Ball, they could be packing clubs the next week, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, things would happen really quickly. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Good. But yeah, we don't live in, the, we're competing with so much stuff too, like, you know, with Twitch and games. And back then, you know, there wasn't any of that stuff. So there's just so much entertainment now. And so, you know, getting people's attention is, you know, much harder. Plus, the people's attention span is a lot shorter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, understand. Maybe uh, since the songs are so short on this album, maybe I can grab people. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, they, maybe that's the winning formula with this album. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's easy. It's easy for this new generation to gravitate towards it because they yeah. don't have to commit a lot of time. Yeah. Everything's two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Everything is simple, easy, straight to the point. There you go. It's like fast food for the brain. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Anders. Thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, the yeah, album is you. out. Songs of Unspeakable Terror. Yes. <laughs> Go pick it up. It's a great album. I have it already. I bought it because I love oh, thank the record. You. I, I bought it. I, I pre-order it. I bought it. I love the album. Uh, wow. I, I loved it the moment I listened to it uh, for review. And you never disappoint. Like I, I've become such a huge fan of you guys. And, Thank and you. your vocals are always one of the things that I gravitate to, but I love the punk vibe that this record has. I, I just love So it. you like punk. You like old punk. You like the fan yeah, of Yeah, I, I grew up listening to punk, so I'm, I'm a big punk fan, but I like the twist that this album has because it's not just punk from A to B. Like, it still yeah. has that bloody hammers. It still has that goth, that doom vibe to it. So it, it, it's, it's, it, it's more elaborate. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But yeah. I, I love the record. It's such an easy listening album. By the time you, you reach the end, you're ready to play it again because you feel like 30 minutes was not enough. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That, so uh, yeah. I, I, I love records like that. I, I love records like that too. You know, you just keep flipping over and flipping over. And flipping yeah. Over. It, it, the album plays itself to be that way. It's not, you don't feel that you had to work your way through it. You felt yeah. like you sit down, you press play, next thing you know, the album is over. Okay, let me listen to it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, some albums, you feel like you're kind of like counting the minutes, you're counting the songs. Am yeah. I here yet? Am I there yet? This record right. doesn't have that road trip, family road trip feel to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're, you're enjoying the ride. It doesn't matter where the destination is, you know? <laughs> Are we there yet? Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Thank you. All the best. Stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll stay in touch. All right, bro. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.